Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Uh, it's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And those Billy Iowa tickets are right here. I mean, this is really a piece of paper in my hand. It's not actually hard tickets. Who has hard tickets anymore? It would be so weird if Billie Eilish specifically had a paper ticket for that uh, concert. Yeah. Well, we got paper tickets at the Maggie Rogers show at House of Blues. That's right. And that was kind of fun. I kept it as a souvenir, actually. I still have about, I would say, you know, five, 600 concert ticket stubs. And one day when I get the time, I'm going to put them in a frame and put it up on the wall I just haven't had time to do that I can't yet. wait for you to get the time. I, I don't know where that comes on the list of importance, uh, but uh, it'd be, I've seen it at somebody else's house. I stole the idea. Really cool idea. Take the concert ticket stubs, and I just, uh, yeah, if anybody can, wants to, you know, maybe help me out, help me free up my time with some other tasks, <laughs> that'd be great. I'd get on that. Okay, those Billy Iowa tickets in seconds, but first, we did promise we're just talking about Tiffany Henyard, the mayor of Dalton, and I talked, uh, somehow it led to me seceding from the city of Chicago Right by Wrigley Field, having my own country, and then, of course, them coming to, to take me down, the government, because that's what they would do. They wouldn't let me do it. No, it would be like a David Koresh situation <laughs> in Wrigleyville, <laughs> Branch Davidians all over again. Well, a- Amy, my wife, and my baby Harper. Amy, your wife? Oh, Amy. Oh, <laughs> Megan, my wife. Whoa. Who's Amy? Th- no. Th- Whoa. Listen. Slow down, Brian. <laughs> who's Amy? No one. <laughs> No one. My sister-in-law's name is Amy. Okay. Wow. So Megan, my wife, and Harper, my baby, are not going to be part of my cult. That's what I was trying to say. But boy, things want to rhyme quickly. Wow. Instead, let's play that Family Guy audio we promised you when Peter tried to secede and create Pretoria. Pretoria. What's going on? Did the city give you the permit? No, no. We're not part of the city. We're not even part of this country. And that makes us our own country. What are you talking about? Thanks to a technicality, we have the right to secede from the U.S. (laughs) From this day forth, this territory will be known as Pretoria. I was going to call it Peterland, but that gay bar down by the airport already took it. All right, uh, 312-591-8300. Billy Eilish tickets right now. Call or 10, you got them at the Madhouse. Uh, that's going to be an amazing show. Wednesday, November 13th from our great friends at Live Nation. Love partnering with them, uh, delivering music for free to you. The United Center, Billy Eilish. 312-591-8300. Call right now. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We just threw out uh, Billy Eilish tickets. And we actually have her on the line here still, Marisol. Congratulations. You're going to see Billy Eilish at the United Center. Oh, I am super excited, especially because yesterday was my birthday. And most especially because the concert will be in November and my niece's birthday. So her and I are big Billy Eilish fans. Wow. You, you guys going together there. Yeah, yeah. What would you do for your birthday last yeah, night? I'm caller, too, so I'm so excited. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> we love it. I feel the passion. Uh, it was a birthday and good I yesterday? I keeps from oh, work are listening, oh. too. Hi, guys. I got through, not you. <laughs> I'm not going to ask about her birthday anymore. I'm sure it was fine. I'm sure it was great. Uh, Marisol, we love you. Oh, my God. This is like the first birth- best birthday gift. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, I got you covered. We got you taken care of. That's what we do here at the party station. Q101. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so, like, uh, so bummed out that I didn't get to hear Kenzie on the background. Mm, that's oh, too yeah. bad. Yeah, Kenzie's out sick today. Yeah. yeah. So we, so oh, bra- yeah, how dare her call off? Did you know it was my birthday yesterday? Damn. She didn't know. Wow, that's too bad. That's too bad. <laughs> All right, Marisol, you have a good one. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Keith. All right, girl. Take it easy. Enjoy the show. Now, remember, tomorrow right at this time, 8 o'clock, make sure you're here for your chance at more tickets for Billie Eilish. So 8 a.m. tomorrow. Make sure you're locked in here. Also around that time tomorrow, Case the producer doing his movie review of Jaws. Now, you might think, what? Well, if you're new to the show, Case is 25 years old, and that doesn't really have a, a bearing on this. He's just never seen most big movies out there. Before we started this saga a few months ago, he hadn't seen – his favorite movie was Boys in the Hood, which is a great, great movie. Yeah, but it was Boys in the Hood and Monsters, Inc. and Norbit, and those were about the only movies I had ever seen. So now he's seen Shawshank, he's seen Braveheart, he's seen Roadhouse, he's Back seen to the, the Future. Oh, so many iconic – and you're a better person. 
I love doing this. It's been so much fun. Turns out, a lot of good movies out there. Didn't know that. Who knew? (laughs) And because the girl at the beginning of the movie Jaws, which everybody else listening has seen this, I understand. If you haven't, you can enjoy, maybe watch it today and review it with Case tomorrow. See the perspective of that. But the woman that ran into the water starting off the movie and gets naked for a glimpse, just a little snippet of the butt. That was the first thing I ever saw in a, uh, a naked woman in a movie. First naked butt you saw was in Jaws. Naked anything. Yeah. Yeah. And it, was, it was Jaws. And she passed away this week. She was 77 years old. Great lady. Uh, we're going to miss her. And uh, she was a championship swimmer back then. It was the first victim of the shark. No spoilers. Case will watch the movie today. Review it tomorrow at 8 o'clock, right around the same time. The Billy Eilish tickets cannot wait because it makes me nervous. I get jealous you get to see these movies for the first time. And then I get nervous you're not going to like it, and I'm going to maybe have to punch you. I, I don't. The, the review of Braveheart was tense. I did not like Braveheart, and I felt like you were mad at me the rest of the day. I really was. <laughs> There's still a bit in there, burning just a little bit. All right, so coming up here, it's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Uh, 820, how about this? A chance to go to the Austin City Limits Music Festival just a few minutes away. Don't go anywhere. You get Blink-182, Foster the People, Cannons, and an incredible VIP trip at 820 coming up. Brian and Kenzie in the morning, and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning, and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101, and a lot of people, you know, especially summer now, more people are hanging out outside, you're getting out of the house. It seems like winter people hibernate, and there's less just people outside here in Chicago, as you know, but then once it gets inside... Well, really, when it gets like 40 degrees, I'm out there in my hockey jersey and shorts, and I'm running around the neighborhood making some noise. What are you, Kevin Smith? Hockey <laughs> jersey and shorts? That's my uh, uniform. Uh, but now <laughs> Is it's, it? No, it's not. Okay. I, I, you know, there was a time when it was, and I just I just can't at this point in my life put on a hockey jersey and some camo shorts and walk around. That, I'd love to. That's too bad. I'd really love to. Everybody else out there that has that uniform going on, hold on to it as long as you can, because someday you won't look good doing it. Keep doing you. Yeah, just keep doing you until you can't. That's the lesson today on the show. My motivational speaker talk here. I'm doing up in Rosemont this weekend. Yeah. You'll sneak peek. The, the Civic Center. <laughs> Selling it out. But it's a time when people get out and it just starts getting loud in your neighborhood. Or maybe something you see things you know, okay, summer's coming. I know what they're going to do in their garage or out over their window. I'm going to see it. But there's some drama out there. And there's a blog. This actually came from our crew members page. So I appreciate George for putting this up there. It came from the Midlothian Illinois Neighborhood Watch. And someone posted this. This, by the way, is a group full of people that need a better hobby. Just before you say anything. Well, let me tell you something. You looking for just some good times. Get into these neighborhood Facebook groups. 100%. Just get into these blogs. You're going to see some fun stuff. People that have nothing better to do with their lives. And I thank God for them every day. Uh, We're blessed. Blessed. Hashtag blessed. (laughs) Okay. And maybe this would be a regular benchmark feature on the show to read these, but this one is priceless. So an anonymous member of this group, the Midlothian Illinois Neighborhood Watch, said, is someone seriously mowing their lawn at 10 p.m. at 150th in Kenton? (laughs) WTF! (laughs) Exclamation point. Now, the person that was doing it responded immediately with a screenshot showing the time on their phone as 9.16 p.m., not 10 p.m. That's a huge difference. So they put, first of all, it was 9 (laughs) p.m., not 10 p.m. Second of all, it's an electric lawnmower. So kick rocks to the person that's calling them out (laughs) for mowing their lawn late at night. Third, I live a very busy life, okay? And I figure it'd be better to cut it now than just let it grow and look like S. If you don't like it, I'll toss you some money, and you can cut it weekly. (laughs) Grow TF up and get over it. TF meaning, you know, grow the F up. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Just trying to make sure everybody's Thank on the same page. Thank you for decoding that Morse code. Thank you for that. I can't tell you how long I have normally laughed at this whole post. Mm-hmm. And I hope you did too in your car right now. I'd love to talk to both of them, by the way, who posted it, who was angry at the 10 p.m. Mowing the lawn at 10 p.m. I have a neighbor that does that. They actually come and cut my building at 10 p.m. one time. And I was like, you know, what the F? Can't you mow it during the day? I mean, I go to bed early because I get up at 3 a.m. for this show. I I don't need to hear a lawnmower. It was not an electric one by that one. But this is really, this is a wonderful statement of how summers go in Chicago. 
are you bothered by somebody mowing their lawn that late into the night? Whether it was 9, 16, or 10 o'clock, we'll say same difference. Are you bothered by that? Yes. Why? You can mow it. I, I get it. You have a busy life, sir. I'm not sure. Or ma'am. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what's or going on there. I'm, or ma'am. I'm not sure what's going on there. But you can't mow the lawn. You have to have some respect for your neighbors after a certain time. You know, and I get And listen, I was 22 years old once. I probably didn't respect my neighbors very well. I, I with loud music and parties. Oh, my apartment was the place where people brought beer over and the party started. I, I My property value, I'd be so worried about it if I saw 22-year-old Brian move into the neighborhood. I would pack up and leave that night. I'd flee the country. My half-stack guitar amp yeah. and three guitars coming in <laughs> is a bad sign. Your Jackson guitar, <laughs> your camo <laughs> pants. Oh, God, I'd get up and leave so quickly. Oh, boy. Uh, M- Monica already checked in. 9 p.m. is way too late. If, it's, if I consider it past bedtime, that, that's what it is. Be considerate. It. Yeah, it's inconsiderate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yard wards in Midlow uh, happen all the time, says Mitchell checking in. <laughs> uh, so I want to hear from the drama going on in your neighborhood right now, especially maybe, again, it's warmer out, more things going on. Please call and tell your story. It's a chance to get on the air, and maybe they'll hear it. 312-591-8300 of your neighborhood drama going on. Uh, Midlow sounds like a, a lot going on down there with the lawn mowing stuff. Uh, I have a neighbor that does naked karate. Do you have a neighbor that does naked karate? Does he, he does he does naked karate? Oh, so that's your issue with it. <laughs> Got it, Brian. All right, next topic. <laughs> now, I am in a three flat, and you go to a back up to an alley like a lot of Chicagoland neighborhoods, and then the detached garages are there. He opens the garage, cracked open because it's too hot in there. I assume. Yeah. The lights on. He's naked doing karate. Now, how do I know that? Because I walked over and looked under the crack <laughs> while he was doing karate. Because you stared right at him. Well, I saw ankles and I said, "What's going on in there?" And I heard this. I heard this. I heard this. Here's what I heard. Uh, 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 uh. That's what I heard. <laughs> he's doing cool. naked. He's doing naked karate. What time did you see him doing naked karate? This was at seven o'clock. A.M. or P.M. Well, it was seven P.M. PM and it was still before it got light out, staying light later, so it was a little bit dark out. Okay, uh, but this is about a month ago. This sounds like your fault. Why? He's it's seven PM. Let him be in his home in peace. Naked doing yeah. karate. Yeah, you play. You talked earlier about how you played Halo naked. I'm sure you had the <laughs> windows open. Your neighbors saw you <laughs> flopping around in the living room. Listen. I didn't have air conditioning at the time. It was one of those apartments. You know, I had a little uh, window unit. Yeah, he doesn't have AC in his garage. What's he supposed to do? Well, how about putting just a gi on to do his karate? I, I'm, if it's hot, sweat it out. If you want to work out, do it that way. I don't need to know that you're doing naked karate in the garage. I don't need to do that. How old is this guy? Uh, he's five, I'm, I don't know exactly. I don't know him. I'm guessing 47 years old. Okay, so it's not like wrinkly yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough 45. I understand. <laughs> uh, check in right now. 312-591-8300 with what's going on in your neighborhood right now. Your neighborhood drama Check in with Brian and Kenzie on Q101 right now. And we want to hear you talk about and explain the details. I appreciate your text coming in, and we'll read some of those. But I want to hear you on the phone telling your story and calling out your neighbors right now for some activities going on in your neighborhood. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And we read a post from the Midlothian, Illinois Neighborhood Watch that, uh, thanks to my guy George for putting this up there on the crew member page, uh, it said, is someone seriously mowing their lawn at 10 p.m. on 150th in Kenton? WTF, this is from the the, the Midlothian, Illinois Neighborhood Watch. The person responded saying, first of all, it was 9, and they actually put a screenshot of 916 on their phone. Second, it was an electric lawnmower, so kick rocks. (laughs) Three, I live a very busy life, and I figured it'd be better to cut it now than just let it grow and look like S. If you don't like it, I'll toss you some money, and you can cut it weekly. We're turning to Liam Neeson at the end there. (laughs) And I will kill you. (laughs) What do you think he does, by the way, that contributes to his busy lifestyle? I bet he works from home. Uh. (laughs) I bet he works from home, and this is just him saying that he's busy at home. Get out there and do it. Also, he said, grow TF up and get over it. I have to say, I love your cynical brain sometimes. Like, you're, <laughs> you're you know, a forward-thinking, kind of, you know, positive guy. But when you dig your heels in and think the worst <laughs> in somebody, you are so right. This guy 100% works from home. Oh, boy. 
Uh, also, someone chimed in when I talked about my neighbor does naked karate in the garage, and I only saw this because his garage was up a foot to let the air in, <laughs> and I looked under, and boy, the view from down low was not good. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't tell me this. That's uh, so no, good. I was holding on to it. Not good. Someone brought up, uh, why don't you go talk to him? Maybe you guys have become best friends. Favorite non-pornographic magazine to masturbate to. Good <laughs> housekeeping. <laughs> if you were a chick, who's the one guy you would sleep with? John, John Samos. Samos. What? Did we just become best friends? Yup. Do you want to go do karate in the garage? <laughs> yup. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I will talk to the guy. Maybe I'll do that. I hope you make a new friend. Oh, it'd be great. It'd be oh, awesome. Oh, my goodness. Uh, people checking in on their neighborhood drama. What's going on in your town? Vaughn's checking in from Andersonville. Vaughn, what's up, buddy? Ahoy. Hi, guys. I have a very particular set of skills. <laughs> that is to read these posts on Facebook, man. My, my community has so much going on, but what I've noticed recently in my neighborhood is that people are just coming by stealing strips of the, the road. Like, I don't even think it's official. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because whoa, usually whoa, whoa. Slow, slow down, slow down, by, slow down, Vaughn, slow down. How do, you yeah. steal, how do you steal a piece of a road? That Okay, so there's two parts of the story that I don't know how happened, okay? And that's A how they're stealing on the road and be how I'm not hearing it because they're <laughs> sneaky, man. Okay. But are you saying that up in the morning? Are you saying there's pieces of concrete missing from the street? Yeah, but like not the normal concrete, you know, when the city wants to do some wacky road jobs, they'll take the entire block, you know, they'll just, they'll strip the entire thing. Yeah. Somebody's coming by and just taking like a corner, you know, like, <laughs> like half of like half, like four inches, you know, just things to really, really, mess with you you know and mm -hmm. I, I i can't i can't jive with that i, I don't know who's doing this mm -hmm. but it needs to stop you know okay. well listen whoever's stealing concrete in andersonville <laughs> stop it <laughs> knock it off yeah knock it off bad thank you vaughn for checking in we have uh, a lena is it lena yeah yeah alina checking in from chicago uh tell us your neighborhood drama ahoy what's up alina ahoy um we have a neighbor who plays electric guitar on his second floor balcony and he's not very good at it is it brian <laughs> <laughs> alina don't be too hard on the guy okay listen i used to play guitar on my balcony and okay so it is you no no this is not me <laughs> unless i don't know where do you live what part of what part of the city are you in alina it's Humboldt Park by 606, but he puts this uh, tacky background, like karaoke background music, and he plays on top of it, and his favorite is um, the uh, Titanic theme song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I did not see yeah. that coming. Right, I thought it was going to be Inter Sandman. Oh, my <laughs> Not my heart will go on. <laughs> I was about to defend the guy and say, you know, with the the – great thing of YouTube for musicians and people learning how to play an instrument is the backing tracks are sitting there for you and you can learn to play along very easily with them. So he's got a lot of distortion going on too, I'm sure. <laughs> well, 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 well. Is that what it sounds exactly, like? Exactly. Exactly like that. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. It is Brian and Kenzie, and Kenzie's sick today. She's missing out on the neighborhood drama here, which I really wish she was a part of, because I know she'd have some up in Elgin going on. Well, I'm sure she is the neighborhood drama. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a bunch of texts from her neighbors. <laughs> All right, we, we started this off with uh, a post from the Midlothian, Illinois Neighborhood Watch that someone was mowing their lawn at 10 o'clock, and a lot of people, we have at least... 70 to 80 texts about lawn mowing at the wrong time. Just lawn mowing. Just Forget lawn mowing. the hundreds of other things going on. Yeah, just lawn mowing. But people keep chiming in on what's going on in their neighborhood. It's summer out now and you know, windows are open. Just more people are out. This is Chicago. This is what happens. We stay outside all day for like three months. So Chiamaka checked in. I hear my neighbors having sex all hours of the night. I have to vacuum sometimes just to get a break. At 10 or 11 p.m., I'll put the vacuum on and just not hear it. Because I think it is kind of intriguing when you hear somebody having sex for a while. I, in my last apartment, the studio that I lived in, I heard it constantly. And at the risk of sounding gross, I loved it. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> it's not. It's intriguing for a little bit. But if it goes every night or every hour, then it's like, hey, guys, 
We get it. You can go a while. You know, I, I understand. I, I got you. The fun thing with them was they were either doing that or they were having a full blown argument, like top of the top of the lungs, yelling at each other. That's so, usually what it is. That was a fun couple. Yeah. I wish them the best. I'm sure they're doing great. I'm sure they're not together anymore. Uh, you know, who knows? Yeah. Uh, you got any on the text line there, Case? Yes. Paige in Streamwood checked in. She said, "I'm a property manager, and during the summer we have swans on our property." Well, last week we had Swan Gate. A resident was threatening the swan with a bat, <laughs> and their neighbor was trying to fight them. Police were called over a swan. Swans are not to mess with. No, one of the meanest animals there are. Yeah, let them live. I get it. Just stay away from them. Don't do that. Don't go after them. With a bat, no less. Yeah. I don't know how you even hit a swan with a bat. I don't want to talk about well, that. It's like so, a pinata. Well, I mean, but they're they're fast and they're sly. Their neck goes up and down. Yeah, but so are baseballs. You know, that's the trick. That's the game of it all. Yeah, but trying to hit a ball is hard. Yeah, I know. So I imagine trying to hit a swan. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, let's see. Justin checked in. A neighbor of mine was blasting Master of Puppets last night at 10 o'clock. <laughs> it's like, okay. Great song, by the way. And he said, I love me some Metallica, but I felt bad for the person's next door neighbor. I was a couple down and I could hear it like this, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I get it. That's a tough song to fall asleep to. Well, the problem is, and this is when I complained about my downstairs neighbors that cranked music. Now, they, they cranked terrible EDM music. Terrible. They weren't doing Master of Puppets. They no. weren't doing Ride the Lightning. Correct. But even if they were doing Master of Puppets... I'd be sitting there going, my baby's trying to sleep, and I'm trying to sleep, so stop it. Knock it off. You can rock it out another time. You know? <laughs> yeah, rock out during the evening, not the night. Yeah. But this I, is what you did. This is payback. That's why I don't feel bad for you whenever you have bad neighbors or weird scenarios in your neighborhood. Hmm. You were that guy for most of your life. I respected neighbors, but I, when I was buzzed, I probably didn't. Okay, so you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's another way of saying that. I mean, I liked music at loud volumes at times, too. I had to go to court to fight a ticket, actually. For loud music? In Bowling, uh, Bowling Green State University in Ohio, um, I was cranking music very loud. And the upstairs neighbors, these girls who I invited to parties all the time, they didn't come. They eventually called the cops on me. That's why. I had to go to, go to court and fight a ticket that was going to be $1,200. And when I'm 20 years old, that might as well have been for $1,200,000. <laughs> Because there's no way that $1,200 ticket's going to get paid. And we found out that the university, I don't know if Columbia had this or if you go to Illinois or Northern Illinois, if you look on the bill you pay, you can get a free lawyer to defend you. I guarantee Columbia College Chicago, the school that I went to, does not have that. Huh. I guarantee. If anybody's in college and you need some help, I think take a look at it. You paid like $1 a month. Now, this lawyer was a student trying to be a lawyer, like okay. a law student. <laughs> sort of a cosplay situation. Yeah. So this guy came in, and he was younger than me. I was like 22. He was like 18. That's got to suck. <laughs> That's got to be a bad feeling. But he came in with a suit. We went into court, and he went, you can't handle the truth to the judge. I was like, whoa, whoa. I don't, I don't want to go to jail today. I'll pay whatever I can. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I, I don't know where this kid is today. But he got the ticket knocked down to ninety dollars. Good for him. So that's a that's something you should always fight. If you get some kind of noise ordinance ticket, I don't know, in different burbs or the city, if you can take the time to go fight it, it'll probably get almost thrown out. And the cop showed up. A lot of say the cop won't show up. You know, yeah. he showed up for the court case. He was ready to take you down. I'm sitting there wearing my dad's sport coat because I didn't own one. <laughs> and I'm trying to defend myself from playing, you know, it was three, like Pearl Jam Alive. It was 311. <laughs> I remember it was 311. I'm cranking 311, you know, beautiful disaster to shake the girls upstairs trying to study, for God's sakes. Going to court to defend that. And my lawyer did use every cliche in the book from movies. Um, You're out of order. You're out of order. This whole courtroom's out of order. <laughs> But he got it knocked down, and I could pay the 90 bucks. I couldn't pay the 1200 God, we got to find him. It's it's probably Lerner and Rowe, one of those guys yeah. today. I don't even know. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q 101.